Hi friends, Father Scott again. Our first reading from the book of Acts today shows us just how disruptive uh, division can be. In the story from the book of Acts, Paul has returned to Jerusalem and he's caused a riot basically in the temple. And the Roman authorities have come down, taken him into custody, and they're trying to sort things out. So they bring him back out before the crowd to try and figure out what's going on, what's created all of this ruckus. And Paul uh, testifies that he is on a trial or he is being attacked for his belief in the resurrection. Well, there's one faction of the crowd that believes in the resurrection and another faction in the crowd that doesn't. And they, uh, in their uh, dispute with each other, they forget all about Paul. They lose their common mission. And uh, the whole thing just turns into a big debacle. That's what division does. It turns us aside. It corrupts our witness. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus talks about how important unity is in the church. Listen to what he says. This is from the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us that the world may believe that you sent me. One of the signs that God really is with us is our unity. One of the ways that people know that, that something different is happening here, something better, and um, maybe something that they want to be a part of is the sign of our unity. That is, uh, it's such a counter sign to so much that happens in society today. There is so much division and uh, partisanship uh, that uh, society seems to be pulling itself apart. So when the world sees a sign of unity, when, world, when the world sees people coming together in love for each other and in service to others, well, that's something that gets their attention. But if when they look at us, they see the same kind of bickering and fighting that they see in the rest of the world, then why would they want to be a part of that? We have no witness if we do not have the first witness of love for each other. It was true in the early church when even when Christians were looked at with suspicion, their pagan uh, um, counterparts had to admit they, they, are, they, they may be strange, they may have some strange ideas, but they sure know how to love each other. That is our first witness, to love one another and to be unified in our mission. And not only is it the first and most important witness to the presence of God in us on a uh, secondary level, nothing is going to get done if we are not pulling together. We are, if we are constantly fighting with each other, then we will lose sight of our mission. We will not be able to put into play all of our gifts if we are divided and we don't appreciate the position, the ideas, the gifts of those who may think a little bit differently from us, then we are crippling ourselves in, in carrying out the mission that God has given to us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. And so let us make Jesus's prayer our own that we may all be one, so that the world will know that we are one, not just with each other, but one also with God through Jesus Christ in the one Holy Spirit who lives in us all. May God help us to uh, 
work through our differences, to respect those differences, and to never lose sight of the mission that we've been given, and to, to always be sure that we hold on to our unity. God bless you, and I'll be talking to you again soon.